I'm going to be showing you today a story of working with a set of compounds um, using NIME, um, but using the Chemaxon nodes together with some other open source chemistry nodes um, to extract compounds from a PDF and then do some interesting uh, analysis with those. At least I think it's interesting. Hopefully you agree. I'll start with a story um, explaining what the problem is and how we're going to solve it, give you a very brief introduction to NIME, and then actually demo the workflow showing um, how to do the analysis. The workflow that I'm doing that I did here is public and I will share a link as I'm going along. So the story. Um, I found this interesting paper in JMedChem. Um, it's kind of a typical JMedChem paper with the one atypical piece that it's actually open access. So the authors have gone to author's choice. So it's nice we can download this PDF and work with it and do interesting things. There's the DLI um, URL. Uh, and let's see what's inside the paper um, or what we're going to be doing with it. I'm going to start by extracting a set of chemical structures from the PDF. I'll do a fair amount of pre-processing of those chemical structures and then once I have an interesting subset I'm going to find the Marcuse structure of those using the Chemaxon nodes. Further using the Chemaxon nodes I will then enumerate um, compounds based on the Marcuse structure and enumerate compounds that could have been in that paper that were not actually there. Here's the URL down at the bottom of the NIME hub um, for the workflow itself. So a bit of foreshadowing. Um, this is the scaffold of the compounds that we're going to be interested in. There's, as you'll see, there's a lot of additional compounds in this paper, and we're going to try and get rid of most of those via a couple different tricks. Um, but we're going to get down to a scaffold that looks something like this. And in the right hand corner is kind of a um, is a synthetic route that shows how to get to one of the building blocks. Um, that is used in the synthesis of this compound. It's how you get this amide group formed. Um, we'll see a group of those when we do the analysis too, and I just wanted to let you um, show those in advance. Let's start though with an introduction of NIME before we actually get into the demo. NIME is an open source tool for working with data. Um, it functions by having a set of nodes. Data moves between those nodes. Each of these nodes can um, manipulate the data that comes in, add new data to it, join it, do visualization, do machine learning, etc. So the workflow I have here reads a set of compounds in, does some chemistry on those, there's a parallel coordinates plot which is shown over on the right hand side, and do some machine learning. So I build a random forest and I do predictions for those and then score those and the view down at the bottom over here on the right shows um, what the score view looks like. So we see we can read data, we can do pre-processing and we can build and score models. Um, we think about NIME in the following way. So we have a set of um, open source pieces. These are in dash lines. So we have the analytics platform itself as well as integrations and extensions that we supply. There's also a large set, a rich set of community open source extensions. Um, we're going to use some of those in this workflow today. Uh, we have partner extensions. These are often commercial um, and we'll, I'll be, for this workflow we will be using the Chemaxon extensions. Um, those are partner extensions. And then we also have a commercial tool which is the NIME server that I'm not going to be talking about today that allows you to share workflows with your colleagues, execute workflows remotely, schedule workflow execution, and generate um, web services and web applications based on your NIME workflows. If you install NIME itself you get a large number of nodes, particularly if you install all of the extensions, you end up with more than 2,000 nodes uh, for reading data in, for doing common transformations. We have a lot of nodes for doing analysis and data mining, some machine learning, we have visualization and deployment. Uh, we also have a rich set of nodes for working with the Hadoop and Spark um, infrastructure, um, sorry, uh, ecosystems. NIME, by this allowing you to connect nodes together, allows you to mix and, match the mix, mix and match the technologies that you want to use. So you can have external data come in from files, as I already mentioned, but you can also pull it in from databases or from commercial platforms. We have a variety of different tools that we've written ourselves for doing machine learning and deep learning, but we also integrate with a number of other packages. On the chemistry side, I mentioned already, there are commercial nodes from Chemaxon, but we also have nodes from Schrodinger or from Cresset or from a number of other companies. And then there's open source chemistry node connections as well. So the RD kit, which is of course near and dear to my heart, um, notes from Vernalis and from uh, the former Eli Lilly site and Earl Wood. An important thing is NIME is an open platform. 
So there's a lot that we provide and a lot that our partners provide, but we recognize we won't be able to do everything. So we also have very good scripting language integration. So you can have your NIME table go into an R script or to a Python script, manipulate that, add new data, uh, and then easily provide back a NIME table that goes to the rest of the workflow. Okay, so that's an overview of NIME. Um, there's a lot there. Uh, so from our website, we have a lot of additional information. There's the NIME Learning Hub, which provides tutorial information. Um, from tech.nime.org, you can get to our forum where you can get open source support. There's a very active NIME community of people um, answering questions and helping each other out on the forum. And then on NIME TV on YouTube, uh, you can find a lot of tutorial videos, um, recordings of some of the nine summits, as well as from some of the meetups that we've done. Let's go on and move to the demo. Um, again, here's the URL at the top. This will be in the slides that are shared at the end of this, uh, at the end of this virtual workshop. So let's go to nine. This is a big zoom out of the workflow itself. Um, we are going to read in a set of compounds from PDF, uh, and I'll talk about the steps in that as we go into detail, then subset those down to try and pick the relevant compounds, the ones that I can use to identify the Marcouche. Um, I will then find, I will have two different approaches for finding the key compounds, the ones that I actually then want to really send into the Marcouche enumeration. Those key compounds will go to the Chemaxon Marcouche composer, to find the Marcouche itself, then to Marcouche enumeration to enumerate all of the possible compounds um, covered by that Marcouche. And I'll then identify the compounds that were covered by the Marcouche that were not in the, in the um, publication itself. Let's start at the beginning. Um, zoom in a little bit so we can see more. Start with the document extractor. Um, this is a chemaxon node. And what it does is I give it the PDF. So I downloaded the PDF with that open access article from JMedCam. And I've told the, um, the document extractor that I want to pull compounds from all text-based formats. I've provided a couple of other options here. The output of this is going to be a set of um, 504 rows. These are all of the compounds that were found in the paper. Those are recognized by names, smiles, inches, etc. Some of those will have salts, um, so I'm going to use the standardizer node. This has a lot of options. The only thing I'm doing here is removing salts and solvates. I remove a couple of extra columns that are not interesting. Then I convert the compounds into canonical smiles, and I use the duplicate row filter to remove duplicate rows. As you can imagine, in a uh, MedChem article, the same compounds are mentioned multiple times. So though I actually end up with 504 compounds from the um, overall text mining, when I remove all the duplicates, it drops me down to 169. So now I have 169 compounds. We can look at those. And you can see I have a mix of different kinds of things in here. So I have compounds that were constructed from common names. I have compounds um, constructed from just generic names like carboxylic acids. The text mining nodes provided the text itself that was converted as well as the context of that. So you can see here this carboxylic acid instance came in this bit of context. And then I also have the page itself. Now, what I'm interested in doing is finding the most relevant structures in this paper um, so that I can try and uh, come up with an approximation of the Marcouche. In order to do that, I need to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's in there. So a lot of those small molecular weight building blocks, those generic structures, etc. The way I'm going to do that is using a mixture of physical chemical properties and that tag that's in the document, um, that's in the table that tells me where the structure came from, if it's a common name um, or a systematic name or a generic name. So the physical chemical descriptors I do using the RD kit. Um, you can see the nice thing that NIME allows is without any additional work, I can take the structures that I've done, been working with in Chemaxon and transparently work with those in the RD kit. I then have a view that I've built that allows me to interact with the data. I'm oh, sorry, wrong view. Um, I have a view that allows me to interact with the data and pick a, sub, a subset of compounds. This is going to have uh, the view that I'm going to show you has two things that are acti interacting with each other. I have a parallel coordinates plot up top and then a tile view down at the bottom that is showing me the selected compounds. 
Um, so I can start and just select the generic compounds, and you can see those down below, carboxylic acids, which we saw already, amine, ketones, et cetera. These are not interesting. I will not select them. I'm just going to pick the systematic compounds that came from systematic names. Um, I want them to have at least one rotatable bond, but not too many. So let's pick the ones that have between one and five rotatable bonds. And I don't want too many H bond acceptors, so let's limit myself down to between one and five H bond acceptors. And here down at the bottom, now the tile view is showing me I had 168 compounds and now I've narrowed it down to 58. Okay, I'm gonna take those on and do the rest of the analysis. Now there's two different ways to get to that I'm using here or showing to get to the subset of compounds that might be most interesting. The first uses the Chemaxon Library MCS. Um, this is a hierarchical approach that builds a hierarchical cluster and then goes and finds the MCS at each level of that cluster tree. The view that I build on top of that, um, I'm going to use to pick the centroid of the cluster I'm interested in. This is the centroid I'm trying to get to. Um, the view itself that allows me to get there is again, it's going to combine a couple of interactive components. Um, the component at the top will allow me to pick the cluster centroid. There are a total of 23 in the document, so I can go on and see the other ones that are present. Start just at the beginning though. Um, these are sorted in the order of the number of molecules on that are present in the cluster. Uh, the tile view down at the bottom shows the compounds that actually correspond to that cluster. What you can see is there, there's one cluster that has 32 molecules, and these look like something you could imagine being in a MedChem series. Right? Um, if I pick this cluster, you can see these are carboxylic acids. If you remember what I showed you at the beginning, these look a lot like the structures that show up in that scheme three. So these are really one of the building blocks. So I'm going to pick this centroid and move it forward. Um, once I identify the centroid, I then go and pick all of the compounds from the paper that match that substructure, not just the ones I filtered down to, so that I now have all potentially relevant compounds. And what comes out of that at the end is a total of 34 structures. Those I pass on to the Marcouche composer. Um, this takes the set of compounds and generates a Marcouche um, that covers that set of compounds, we can do the top branch. So here we can take a look at what comes out of that. It is not super easy to see here in NIME itself, so let's just quickly take a look. You can see there's a lot of information here, but I can copy this out and then paste it into Marvin. And here, take a look at my Marcouche. So this is the scaffold um, with the R groups labeled and the um, sorry, the scaffold with the R groups labeled. And then over on the side, we actually have what's present in that document for the R groups. So this is the Marcouche covering all of the structures um, that were in, that, that contain the um, centroid of the scaffold that we thought was interesting. So if there's 34 structures. We now take those um, and do a Marcouche enumeration. There are only 34 here, but those R groups can be combined in many ways to get a large number of compounds. So we here in the Marcouche enumeration, we say we want the 1,000 done randomly. Uh, so we get the first 1,000 out of that. We convert them to canonical smiles. There are going to be a number of duplicates here just because of the nature of the way that this is done. So again, I stick a du duplicate row filter on there. So I started with 1,000 compounds and now I end up with 693. And then what I want to do is find the compounds that were present in my enumerated set that were not present in the original paper. So I began to bring the smiles for the original paper back in here, remove those, and I end up with a set of 685 compounds that I have not seen before, um, but that could have been in that paper based on the R groups that are present. And I can now take these forward and do whatever additional analysis I want to do with it. But that's for another webinar. So that wraps up my demo. Um, you're welcome to download the workflow yourself and play with it and see what additional things you can find. Uh, emphasize this can work with um, PDFs, any PDF. So I did a um, scientific publication. It could just as easily work with a um, PDF from a patent. Please give it a try. Hopefully you find it interesting and I'm happy to take questions when we get to the end of this block. Thank you.